The Wittig reaction forms alkenes from ketone or aldehyde starting materials, and one of the remarkable things about this reaction is that the cis or Z isomer of the alkene forms preferentially. In other words, when we run a reaction where we could end up with an alkene in which the larger groups or the higher priority groups are on the same side of the double bond or on opposite sides, the product in which the R groups are on the same side of the double bond is the favored or major product. This is the cis or Z isomer. The trans or E isomer is formed in much smaller amount and in some cases is not observed at all. This is a case of stereoselectivity, more specifically diastereoselectivity, the selective formation of one diastereomer, the cis or Z diastereomer, over another, the trans or E diastereomer. So to explain this, we need to think about the stereochemical course of the Wittig reaction, and in particular what happens in the first AD sub N elementary step, which really establishes the eventual configuration of the product. And to think about this, I'm going to make use of a Newman projection involving the ilid and carbonyl starting materials. So let's put the carbonyl group in back of the Newman projection, and let's imagine that we're dealing with an aldehyde here. The reason it helps to think about an aldehyde is that sterically there's a very substantial difference between R2 and H pretty much regardless of what R2 is because hydrogen is so small. So the larger of the two groups is definitely R2 and I'm going to highlight that in green for the time being. Taking a look at the ilid now, keep in mind that the ilid has an additional hydrogen atom positioned here. Like the carbonyl substrate, the ilid has two groups linked to the ilid carbon, one of which is much larger than the other. The R1 group, pretty much regardless of what it is, is going to be much, much larger than hydrogen. Now let's think about what happens when the ilid approaches the carbonyl compound in an AD sub N elementary step. Let's remind us ourselves first of the curved arrows here. What happens in this key step of the Wittig reaction is nucleophilic addition of the nucleophilic ilid carbon to the electrophilic carbonyl carbon. This establishes stereocenters, as we'll see here shortly. And so the stereochemical course of this step is critical, since those stereocenters could have one of two configurations each. Rounding out the Newman projection, we have the ilid in the front. And there's a question of how the ilid substituents are oriented. Where is the PPH3 plus group? Where is the hydrogen? And where is the R1 group? Well, if R1 and R2 are relatively large, it's likely that they'll prefer to be anti or across from one another in the most stable transition state for this addition step. This places the phosphorus group, PPH3+, anti to the carbonyl oxygen and places the hydrogen, relatively small hydrogen, gauche to the R2 group. The key really is that the relatively bulky R1 and R2 groups prefer to be anti or in an anti orientation in the lowest energy transition state for this process. Here's a three-dimensional model that shows the result of this addition process with the large R1 and R2 groups in anti-positions. Notice that we've created two stereocenters in this intermediate with positive and negative charges. This carbon is now a stereocenter, the former ilid carbon, and the formal, former carbonyl carbon is now a stereogenic center. Here's a wedge dash projection of that same intermediate that we're seeing on the right. In order to proceed forward, we know that oxygen and phosphorus have to form a bond. And this actually requires a rotation of the central carbon-carbon bond. Let's perform that rotation now to see what happens to this intermediate before the key bond forming step. Notice that after this 180 degree rotation, so that we've brought the oxygen and phosphorus relatively close to one another, the R groups are now relatively close to one another. They've moved into what look like cis or sin positions in this conformation of the intermediate. And here's a wedge dash representation that shows this. Notice that the R1 and R2 groups have gone from looking anti, as they were just after the nucleophilic addition, to looking sin or cis in the intermediate after bond rotation and linkage of oxygen and phosphorus. Because the next step, the elimination, happens with retention of configuration, the major product we observe is the cis alkene. The trans alkene would come from the transition state in which R1 and R2 are gauche, in other words, in which R1 and H switch places, and that's relatively unstable because of steric interactions between R1 and R2. In this anti-transition state that avoids those steric interactions, we eventually get around to the cis alkene 
thanks to this 180 degree bond rotation that happens before phosphorus and oxygen are linked together.